Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're talking about making videos. I get messages, so this is an answer to questions. What kind of video equipment do you use? How do you record your rain session? What kind of tracer software do you use? We're gonna answer some of those questions. Before I get to that point, if anybody out there watching this video is interested in making golf content, just do it. It's wonderful. I felt like I was a latecomer. You know, six, five, six years ago when I started, it's it was just like, I'm late to the game. Nobody's gonna watch my channel. I'm never gonna get to a thousand subscribers. Look at Mark Crossfield. Look at Rick Shields. You know, these are pros, you know, club pros, or not, not club pros, but like teaching pros that are very successful. There's no way I'm gonna be able to compete with them, but I just wanna make some fun content with my old with my old clubs and having fun, you know, show the fun side of amateur golf. And it's worked out well for me. This is this channel is now self-sustaining. It took me about a year and a half to monetize my channel. So I made a video a week for a year and a half and with kind of very little hope that I'd ever make it. And then now all of a sudden, you know, thanks to all of you, thank you, all of you, the best audience on the planet, you know, I got there. I was like, oh, now it's self-sustaining. Now it pays for itself. I can, it pay, like the, my Adobe suite, $60 a month. I can pay that from revenue I make from AdSense and my patrons. Thank you again to my patrons. And so it's wonderful like the opportunity that's been given to me. I feel really you know, grateful to all of you. But d don't feel like it's too late to join the game because I felt that way and here I am. So if you're interested, join. I think I've talked about this too much. I really like to encourage youth especially. Just If you're interested in being a YouTube star, not that I'm a star, but if you're interested in being a YouTuber, get into it. The sooner the better. It's like planting a tree. They say the best time to plant a tree, this isn't a tree. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. So that's it. Let's talk about my video equipment. We're gonna start with what you're looking through right now. In studio, I use a Panasonic G7 mirrorless camera, okay? It's mirrorless because the SLRs have a single lens reflex. It has a mirror that you look through, through the viewfinder to see you know, what you're seeing through your lens. And then that mirror moves out of the way and the shutter opens and it exposes you know, the, the photo. But the camera that I use doesn't have that mirror, so it's not a single lens reflex, it's just a mirrorless, that's why they call it mirrorless digital camera. It has a removable lens, Panasonic G7. I paid like 500 bucks for it. I think it's still like 500 bucks. It shoots 4K, that's all I needed. Um, I use that for my primary video, in studio, and my backup audio. Now, my audio, my main audio is recorded through a CAD, a CAD small diaphragm microphone. I, I've usually seen these like in studio recording musical instruments, okay? But for me, for some reason, it works really well for voice overs more than like a large diaphragm. Like you see these podcasters with these big mics in front of their face and they're talking into these mics. Uh, my experience with those hasn't been great. Uh, same with like shotgun mics. Those work really well outside on like my previous channels uh, or my older channels. But indoors, I just like the sound of the small diaphragm microphone. I feel like it gives me the most... Uh, the best audio with you know the least amount of interference. Like I don't have to wear a lav mic or anything so I can go like this all day long and not worry about ruining my audio. So running a CAD microphone off of, and it's powered by a Tascam digital recorder. So uh, condenser microphones need uh, phantom power and so it runs it through that XLR mic so I can get some reasonable audio. And then I'm just running these lights I uh, Godox something uh, SL sixty W a sixty watt LED light. We're shooting through uh, an umbrella. So uh, that's my studio setup. Pretty straightforward. You know, it's worked for many years. Uh, you, you know, like I said, not the most expensive equipment on the planet. It does it does exactly what I needed to do, and that's all it is. And my video equipment, I used to be like all reading into specs and like, oh, look at the latest and greatest, and then I realized. You know, after years of doing this, it's like, I just need something that works and it's become just like a, a tool instead of like some amazing technological like marvel, okay? So that's what I use in studio on the range. Now, I'm gonna share what I do, but if you have suggestions, leave them in the comments below. I'm always trying to develop my video production skills. And so if you have this, you know, great method of doing things, let me know in the comments below because I'm interested in it, legit, like interested in it. So when I show up at the course, the first thing I do, the range, the first thing I do 
is I wire myself up for audio. Okay, and I'll do this at my car. So this is my setup. I literally just pull this out of my golf bag, okay? So I run this Sony digital recorder. I have two more of these. Uh, they got lost in our moves. We moved three times in two years. Pandemic, thanks a lot. And so I just bought this one at Best Buy last spring because I couldn't find my other one. And this is, it was like an open box special. And this is a Sony IC recorder, ICD UX570. No idea. It's just a Sony digital recorder. It has this like funny, like, can you see this USB, USB A port that sticks out of it? It kind of works. <laughs> anyway, I don't have a micro SD card in here. I just use the onboard memory and I've never had a problem. I just push like literally I'll like wire myself up with this Rode lav mic with this little wind screen on it with this. I call it a mouse. It's just a, a wind screen. Uh, people say it's, you know, 100% audio transparency. Another way of saying it doesn't interfere with the audio. It's just it protects you from the wind. So this Rode mic cost me 80 bucks, this Rode lav mic, 80 bucks. This thing, like I said, I got it on clearance, like open box special, whatever. It was like 30 bucks for the Sony thing. I think they're like normally like 60 bucks. Uh, I think I'll have these in my Amazon shop and under my YouTube sec under my YouTube shop and my Amazon shop. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. But so these will be on, on there or something similar, right? But these are not cheap. They're like 60 bucks. The lav mic, 80 bucks I paid for this thing but I really like it. It's proven to be very durable in the rain with my Titleist, you know, when I accidentally slap and slipped out of my hands. So I wire myself with this at the car. I push record and I, and there's a hold option, right? So you just slide this switch up on the side and you, it locks. So it's just going to record no matter what buttons you push. So that's why I love this. And I just pocket this and then I record myself from the car all the way out through all my rain session and then back to the car and then I'll stop it. Okay. So I love how long this thing can record. It's just a wonderful tool. And that's how I see it, it's just a tool, okay? Why don't you get it more expensive? Why don't you hire a sound guy with the boom and a shotgun mic and a dead wombat on there? It's like, you know, there's a secret, a Hollywood secret. Come in, come in, bring it in everybody, listen closely. Hollywood secret, it's called saving money. See, all right, this replaces the audio guy. I, with all due respect, if I had a bigger channel, I'd be all about that, let's get a union audio guy in here. But until then, we're going with, we're going with what works for me, okay? So that's my audio. My, I have no backup audio. If that fails, I throw the footage away. It's if it's a talkie, like if I'm talking on the range. My camera is, I think this is an iPhone 8. It was that era where the batteries would die. So can you see this huge hump back right here? I bought one of these external battery cases and I put an external battery case on my phone. And you can see here, it says iPhone is not activated. This is an old phone, not activated. I just use it for the camera, okay? And then I use a Manfrotto little tripod and that's it. So when you're watching me on the range, this is what you're watching me through. I go like this exactly like this the button yeah it has a button iphone with a you remember these fingerprint you know what do they call it bio whatever i was gonna say bioluminescent that's not right with this uh biometric whatever like fingerprinting button over here on this side and so i'll just turn this on switch over to camera it's usually still locked i just swipe push record on video and then prop it up and point it in the general direction. And you can see it blocks my view. The reason why I don't do it the other way is because this huge battery uh, doesn't always stay on here. And so it's very easy for it to slide and fall out. And it's done that in the middle of me recording before. Not a big fan of that. So I go this way. And this way has not fallen out on me yet. So like I said, this is my primary recording. And it's super convenient because this is small and compact. This is small and compact. I just throw them in my golf bag, hike on out there, and they, they've proven to be very durable and set up and go. You know, that's how I do it. Then I do have a backup if it is raining and I want to hit a Titleist driver. 
and I want it to slip out of my hands and go flying out into the range. Gosh, that was a bad day. I do have this setup. So this I, is a Bauer uh, tripod, the same idea, you know? And I have a GoPro 9 black. I don't know if you can see that. It's 9 black. Is there a 9 silver? I don't know what the difference is. It's like, you know, when you're buying like Star Wars collectibles, it's like the black edition. No idea. So 9 black. Uh, this is great. It's super waterproof. Never had a problem with this. This is the one that's out there on the range when it's raining. Uh, to me, it's just a little bit easier to do tracers with my iPhone video than with this one. Just my preference. So that's the one I use primarily. This one is like the adverse weather conditions camera. And it's fine. The Bauer tripod comes with this telescopic feature, which I don't use because if there's any kind of wind, it just falls over. So I just leave it all the way down, just like this. It's just my backup setup. Uh, yeah, that's it. You know, I don't know what else. it's a GoPro 9. What, what more do you want me to tell you about this? The final thing that I always, oh, by the way, this Bauer thing, tripod came with another uh, phone clamp thing, which I don't use, but it's, I keep them together just in case I do need it. In case like my Manfrotto breaks, then I can use this just in case. It seems like just my opinion. It seems like this is more likely to break than my Manfrotto, but what do I know? All right, the final thing that I have in my bag for a video is this. This is just a 10,000 milliamp hour USB battery pack. So two, SU, two USB ports, I can use it to charge something. Uh, recently, we're filming pickleball content. Uh, I'll share in a future video our pickleball channel, which is just starting. I think we have two videos out. When we have a few more, I'll share that, and I encourage every, everyone to go subscribe to my pickleball channel, our pickleball channel. There's a group of us. And so I use this to run my Tascam audio recorder. I've, I use this, I've used this to charge my phone, even though it has a battery pack on it. Sometimes I just use up all of that battery and I just need more power, and this thing is super convenient. I uh, charge my GoPro, charge my camera, charge the battery pack on my camera, run my Tascam off of it. Uh, whatever we need, you know, I have two outlets here I can have some power if I need out on the range or course really convenient nice to have these and now they have ones that are like 20,000 milliamp 40,000 milliamp hours so battery pack so that's what I use let me know what you use in the comments below again if you're interested in making content you don't need like ten thousand dollars worth of gear just you know what you need to to get started You'll see, I'm sure you'll see this evolve and I'll make another video like this in a few years if my equipment changes much. Final thing I want to talk about, I get questions about, uh, I build my own computers. I just built a new computer because my graphics card and CPU weren't keeping up with my software. I couldn't even put Windows 11 on my old computer. And so that's going to be released on one of my channels. I'll let you know which channel I haven't decided yet, but that, what, that will be released, my computer build. So I have a brand new computer. Uh, with, yeah, a new graphic. Yeah, I'll, anyway, I'll make it, uh, you, I'll, I'll link that video or mention it in a future video when I decide which channel it's going to go on and when I edit it. So new computer, but I'm running Windows 11. I'm running the Adobe Suite. So I'm editing, my video editing is in Adobe Premiere Pro and all my tracers are done on After Effects. After Effects is super quick. You know, it's like put the video in there, golf ball, path. You know, I just draw the path with the pen tool. And then I use the write on feature and just it just draws the line. Uh, it's super convenient, super fast. I had seven in the video that's coming out this Friday. There are seven shots I hit on the range, <laughs> seven times. And I finished the, from the start time to when the render finished was 45 minutes, plus or minus a couple of minutes, okay? And it was great, you know, super fast. I've spent two hours before with apps trying to like, oh, get my tracer right, come on. Put it, no, it's over here. And then the Tracer app's like, oh, you just spent 10 minutes trying to put it over here? Well, I'm gonna reset, zing, back to my original idea. And I'm like, no, but you can, oh, that was just a waste of 12, 15 minutes. And then you, you know, you're like, come on. So for me, it's just, for my workflow, it works best to use After Effects. Just me, okay? 
so I edit with Adobe Premiere. So I use After Effects, I do the tracers, I export that separate, and so I get this tracer video, which I bring into Premiere Pro, and I edit all my pieces together. I use my Lumix G7, the one that you're watching me through right now, to take still photos of the club that I'm reviewing, and I put that at the end, and I use that as my thumbnail. So, so my cameras, Lumix G7, iPhone 8, and a GoPro 9. My audio equipment is a Tascam digital recorder, CAD, CAD, small diaphragm microphone in studio. And I use a lav mic running to a Sony digital recorder. You can probably look for those in my Amazon shop. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. And that's it. Hollywood secret, saving money. That said, let's move on to fantasy golf. The FedEx St. Jude Championship just happened, and Lucas Glover, remember L. Glover? Remember last, last week I was like, I know what L stands for. It's obviously Lucas, Lucas Glover won. Uh, it's just a typo, is this, am I looking at last week's? Give me a second. St. Jude Championship, Memphis, Tennessee, ended August 13th, which was Sunday. Lucas Glover, yeah, L. Lucas, congratulations, Lucas Glover. For fantasy golf, you can see the results right here. Uh, this is the Vintage Golf League. Congratulations to the top 10, everybody. I didn't make it. Just, I should have picked the obvious picks, but I was, I see, and wasn't being smart. And we'll also see the season leaders here as well. So, congratulations, everybody out there who knows golf. I <laughs> apparently don't. So, if you want to join us on this league, it's free. Okay, you can just go to PGA Fantasy Golf, just create an account, join, and... Once you join, you can just find our league and say, join league. It's open to the public. Anybody can join our league and dominate face as long as you're not me because I can't, I don't know how to pick a good golfer when I see one. So that said, congratulations, everybody. And if you want, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to everybody else who wants to join, future members to join. I really appreciate it. I need to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to my patrons. There are a couple of patrons that I've messaged asking if they want to be on the credits and they haven't responded yet. So if you know, you're know you curious, I want your permission before I just put your name up. So if you've joined, hoping to get your name up here, uh, just go to Patreon and respond to my message and let me know that you want your name up here and I'll get you on here. But I really appreciate my patrons. It means so much you know, having that backing and support. It feels like you know I have a support group that want me to continue making videos, which is a huge help, if nothing else, psychologically. So thank you so much to all my patrons. As usual, be sure to set your line. Are, are we done with golf? Is there another? You know, I can check right here. Fantasy golf. I'm on the app right now. Edit roster. I click on the calendar and it says BMW Championship is this week, August 16th through the 20th. So the BMW Championship, this is your reminder. Make your picks today or tomorrow. Today's Tuesday. Tomorrow will be Wednesday. Uh, once the play starts, it's locked. Okay, so be sure you make your picks before Thursday. Thank you everybody for watching. As usual, you can support me on Patreon. My Amazon shop, I'll put a link in the description below. I'll have some of the equipment I mentioned in that shop. Just find the YouTube section, the YouTuber section or something, and I'll have that production equipment that I use. There's nothing that fancy there. It's mostly just good, solid tools that you need to make videos. As usual, subscribe if you enjoy this content. Uh, this video ran on for quite a while, a little bit longer than my average Talking Tuesday, but I hope that's okay with everybody. I am the Vintage Golfer.